Welcome to the show. Thank you. And congratulations on a stellar film that is touching people, it's inspiring people. I mean, I saw people cry in the cinema at the end of the film because it really is gripping. For those who haven't seen the trailers or know nothing, I won't spoil the movie, but I'll tell you the plot. It's a story of um, a young girl played by yourself who is friends with a young boy who gets shot at a police stop, a story that we're all too familiar with. And that's just really the beginning of the story. Before we even get into the story itself, I, I, I have to ask, is there, is there a difficulty that comes with playing a character or telling a story about something that's happening now all the time? Yeah, I mean, I think there was kind of a deeper sense of responsibility with the way that we approached it and knowing that we had to reflect events that were real. And, and so we had to commit ourselves as fully as we could to it in order to honor the lives of those who've been affected by things like this. Right, and we, we, we watched the story unfold. And a lot of the time it feels like, you know, you watch it in the news and they'll go, a black boy was shot by, yeah. and the names become secondary, and that's why so many people say, say their names. Yeah. But what we also forget is all the other people who were emotionally shot, all the right. families that were affected, and that's, that's really what the story is about. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be... So it's based on this book by Angie Thomas, which is incredible, and I highly suggest that you read it if you haven't. Um, but it's supposed to be a tool of empathy. So oftentimes we see these events portrayed on the news and in media, but usually they're misconstrued or they're at least postulated so that they don't fully humanize um, the people of color who are killed and affected by these events. And so that's what this is supposed to be a tool to do. It's supposed to ground it in a personal narrative and hopefully people will have a sense of empathy because of that. And so far it's, it's been really successful. We have a lot of white people crying <laughs> after, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> I've never seen so many white people crying before. Like, it's, it's amazing. That's, that's what I was like. That should be the new Rotten Tomatoes. It's like a little thing, white people crying score. It's just like a... Exactly. But you know what? I, I understand why, why so many people cry. And I think it's partly because of the empathy that you speak of. Your character plays an interesting role where she grows up in what many people would call the hood, you know? Yeah. So you grew up in the hood, but she gets to go to a privileged school that is predominantly white. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. And she lives in this world where she code switches all the time. Mm -hmm. She's got her white friends. She's got her black friends. She lives between two worlds. Mm -hmm. And what happens is her friend who's black gets shot. Yeah. And now she's stuck choosing between these two worlds. Right. It's a really interesting dilemma. And I, I wondered, like, as a, as a person, was there anything in your life that you, that you drew from that you connected with? when it came to that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm pretty sure that if you are black and living a contemporary black experience, you probably have code switched at some point in time or are actively code switching in your everyday life. Um, I know that you relate to that experience. Right. I read that in your book. By the way, my dad says that he loves your book oh, so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 yeah, it, it's, it's a normal thing to do, but this is an, a higher level of code switching. Because, I mean, yeah. it's one thing to go from, hey, what's up, to good morning, sir. Right. But, it, but it's another thing to code switch your allegiances. Because mm, yeah. your character is at a white school, and she's going, if I testify against these cops or if I speak out, I will be seen as being anti-cop by my right. white friends. Exactly. And on the other side, if I testify, people will see me as a snitch. Yeah. That's a difficult game to play. Yeah, she's walking a really difficult line, but she comes to the conclusion at the end of the day that she can no longer compromise who she is and that she needs to stand up for her community. She needs to be her most authentic self and she'll no longer, you know, put on her white voice in right. those spaces. When you were filming the scene that we commonly refer to as the talk, yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's a really interesting scene in the movie where you know, you have your character's dad talking to the family repeatedly through their lives, saying, this is how you conduct yourself around police. This is always going to be mm -hmm. a life-altering experience if you handle it the wrong way. Yeah. You, you look at that story and, and you look at that scenario, there is a pain that comes with what happened. Mm -hmm. And there are often people who say, well, if you, if you conduct yourself the right way, it won't happen. Yeah. But unfortunately, that, that's not the truth. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's tragic because we rob black children of their ability to be children, you know? They have to be so careful about the way in which they act and present themselves from such an early age because they even understand that they are not afforded childhood in the way that, you know, their white counterparts are. Right. Looking at the film, looking at the response that it's gotten, 
what would you say your greatest hope and success would have been beyond the white people crying? <laughs> when people watch, when people watch the hate you give, what, what do you want them to walk away with? Because I know everyone has a slightly different feeling. Um, well, I mean, white people crying actually was the goal. Um, <laughs> we... <laughs> <laughs> it was the goal. Well, you know what? We, we yeah. wanted to make sure that you know those who you know, have been affected by the way in which the media misconstrues these events, actually have a real sense of empathy and are able to place themselves into the shoes of our communities and understand that these are not just news events. These are happening to real people. They affect us in really deep and pervasive ways. Um, and then in terms of how it affects people of color, we wanted this to be a space within which we could be ourselves and see ourselves represented and feel validated by that. and maybe process some feelings that we don't ever have the opportunity to move through. It's a powerful story. I think you've done all of those things and more. Thank, Thank you so much you. for being on Thank the show. You. Thank you. The Hate You Give will be in theaters nationwide on October 19th. I'm Ivan Stenberg, everybody.